The other day, the game fairy stopped by and dropped this game off at my doorstep. So, I thought we'd take a look at it and see what's inside the box. The game is Across the Pacific and it's designed by Michael Myers and published by Pacific Rim Publishing. Across the Pacific, designed by Michael Myers from Pacific Rim Publishing Company in 2010. The Japanese forces start out as prepared as they are ever going to be. Ships, troops, aircraft, all at the ready. Enough scarce oil on hand to form the task forces needed to evict the Western powers from Southeast Asia and the Pacific Ocean. Before the war begins, the Japanese forces select their long-term goals. As months pass, the Japanese forces must balance strategic posture with the need for vital resources in order to maintain mobility in defense against the surging enemy. The Allied forces begin the struggle scattered across the Pacific Basin and weakened weapons. Strength must be gathered and sent out to bulwark faltering places in the front lines and seek out weak spots where the enemy forces may be brought to battle. U.S., British, Dutch, Indian, Australian, Soviet, New Zealand, French, Burmese, and Chinese forces grow in power. All the industry, stubborn resolve, and resources the Allies forces the Allied forces possess must be focused in combat against a skillful and courageous enemy. Across the Pacific portrays the entire Pacific War in five month turns, <clears throat> with units that range from armies to regiments, air fleets to destroyer flotillas. The game system is interactive so that each player is involved at every moment of play. The heart of the game's mechanics is a series of strategic and tactical phases, five of each per player turn, that are sequenced by a chip draw so that each player will know his and the opponent's possible actions, but not the order in which they will be undertaken. This brings about continuous, continual strategic and operational opportunity as players plan their actions in response to the lifting fog of war. Across the Pacific provides a manageable and fast-paced war game that has a high level of detail and operational flavor while retaining the strategic scope of the ebb and flow of the Pacific War. For all of the tactical and operational detail, the strategic nature of Across the Pacific allows two players familiar with the rules to game out the full nine turns in 12 hours. Across the Pacific has five scenarios. Shorter scenarios focus on actions centered around Midway and Guadalcanal. The campaign scenario encompasses the entire war. The short campaign scenario begins on turn two with the Japanese initial assaults already completed. The players can undertaking the major the players can undertaking the major fighting from May of 1942 to August of 1945 in a contest that can be played to completion in 6 to 8 hours. The solitaire scenario allows players to explore whether the historic Japanese attacks attain the greatest level of operational victories possible within the limits of Japan's resources. Across the Pacific contains a 36 by 48 inch map showing the Pacific Basin from Pearl Harbor to Impal from Dutch Harbor to Brisbane, 960 die cut back printed 5 8 inch counters, 24 page rules booklet, 24 page designer's notes, historical commentary and examples of play booklet, two 11 by 17 inch color back printed order battle charts, one Japanese, one allied two 8.5 by 11 inch unit and carrier air groups display charts, one Japanese, one allied, two 8.5 by 11 inch task force display charts, two 8.5 by 11 inch charts and table cards, and a die. The back of the box also gives you a representation of the map and of the various areas in which the game will be played upon and it also gives you an example of some of the counters which you'll be using to play the game. Okay let's see what's inside the box. I already took the liberty of removing the plastic because I don't think anybody wants to watch somebody fumble around removing a piece of plastic from the uh, game. The game box is fairly large. It's 
not very deep, but um, it's very tall and very wide compared to most of your book uh, case games. What do we have inside? We have a six-sided die, which in this case is orange. We have the 24-page rule booklet. It's going to all be in black and white. Let's see here. Talk about fumbling around. Like I said, it's going to be all in black and white. I don't see much in the way of illustrations here, so they must be in the... Uh, um, the other booklet it, it talked about looks like the game is dedicated to Warren B. Myers pharmacist mate first class USNR and it gives his service record from 1942 to 1945 we have let's see here the introduction game equipment initial setup sequence of play reinforcements and posting stacking zones of control naval unit movement we have air movement ground movement general rules of combat naval and air combat ground combat uh, supply we have over here on the other side amphibious landings distinction between uh, let's see Distinction between aircraft and their pilots. Units with special capabilities. Magic. Hey, I thought this was supposed to be a realistic game. Um, collapse of the Burma Front. Collapse of the Philippines. Collapse of the Netherlands, East Indies. The Doolittle Raid. And the scenarios. Across the Pacific, remember Pearl Harbor, Midway, Guadalcanal. The Rising Sun, which is a solitaire um, scenario. Then we have the victory conditions and the credits. Um, like I say, it's a uh, fairly average size rules booklet, I guess. We have some examples of unit types. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Looks like we have a ground unit at the top. It has a unit size, a unit type, unit identification. It has a CEL, which is a combat effect effectiveness level, which is a rating of the unit's training and combat worthiness. Then it has a combat factor and a movement point. Uh, um, number of movement points it has. <clears throat> then we have naval units. We have attack factor B equals surface bombardment, T equals torpedo combat. We have an anti-air factor, unit identification, the CEL uh, modifier, and a range. And we have aircraft carrier, air unit capacity is a number, looks like a two at the top. And then we have your air units. They have an identification, which is, I believe, separate units of a specific type of craft. Lack of a designation occurs when only one unit of the specific type of aircraft appears in the game. Okay, then we have what? Air attack factor, bombardment factor, uh, D is a dive bomber, L is a level bomber, S is strategic, and T is a torpedo bomber. And then we have the CEL for allied units only. And then we have a range and a defense factor. <clears throat> Let's see what the sequence of play is. Looks like the abbreviated sequence of play. Get most of this in the camera here. Sequence of play. Across the Pacific uses a combination of a traditional sequence of play phases with a more innovative system of randomly drawn activity chits picked within strategic and tactical phases. The order of phases is, is so I'll get a better picture here, the posting phase. Players plan for the future, introduce new units and post units onto the map and the task force displays. Then we have a strategic phase. 
Yeah, there it is. Players make strategic deployments governed by the order of chits that are pulled from a cup. The tactical phase, number three. Players make tactical sorties, sorties governed by the order of chits that are pulled from a cup. Four, ground combat. Players resolve amphibious assaults and other ground combat between adjacent ground units. Five is the end phase. Units are returned to base bases and victory conditions are checked. So, other than that, we have a pretty standard layout. Like I say, I think it's 24 pages. Um, pretty dense text. And it seems to use uh, a case method, but it's very narrative. Okay, then we have the player's handbook, designer's notes, historical commentary, and examples of play. This must be the... Uh, must be the... Um, <clears throat> last of the designer's notes. What do we have here? Let's see. We have another dedication, it looks like, here. This is Across Pacific was the last project completed by rules editor Stephanie Tibbetts before her death in September 2008. She was a published editor and historian in the field of medieval can can canon law and became active in what she described as canon law <clears throat> during her editing of the Grenadier and Counterattack magazines. In addition to Across the Pacific, 27 other board games bear the imprint of Stephanie's clear, consistent, concise style and hard work. In the Player's Handbook, we have Game Notes, Designer's Notes, Developer's Notes, Historical Notes. We have Appendices with abbreviations and a Gazetteer. Then we have the historic summary of the war in the Pacific. We have the across the Pacific annotated uh, bibliography. <clears throat> then we have some examples of air combat, examples of naval combat, examples of amphibious combat through the cycle of Type A task force, and then we have players' notes. It looks like this one is going to be in black and white as well. What was this published in 2010? Here we have the identification of the uh, historical ships in the game. They're just going to be listed as BB1, BB2, but it um, lists the actual ships based upon that identification number. And here we have a glossary, that, or appendices, abbreviations. Um, so if you're having trouble with abbreviations, you can refer to page 6, and it should give you... Um, an exam or uh, definition of that abbreviation. Then we have the gazetteer, which tells you which hexes uh, contain uh, which which hexes contain uh, the various features, like Guam is in twenty five thirty in in Mariana. Saipan is 2329, there's an airfield in Anchorage there, and then we have Tinian, which is 2429, and there's an airfield there, so pretty much just goes on from there, kind of defines all the different hexes in case you have a question, what do we have, the bibliography, So they have many different uh, sources for the bibliography. Yes, I would say so. Going on about three pages. Uh, four pages, it looks like. And then we have examples of air combat, which do not contain any graphics. Well, okay, they're on the next page, it looks like. So... Then we have the comprehensive examples of naval combat. And more examples. Which is good. Always like to have examples of play in a rule book. 
And then we have more um, information on the, uh, on the various types of combat and stuff. Okay, what do we have here? This must be some of the ta charts, tables, that type of thing. <clears throat> Looks like a, a fold out type of thing, maybe. Yes. <clears throat> A minute here while I fumble around. This is the order of battle chart for the Allied forces. Uh, turn one at the top up here looks like units you know, that will be on the map <clears throat> at the start of the game. Pearl Harbors in 2001. And we have several battleships, cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers. There's uh, the next three boxes tell you what is in Manila and so forth. And then we have turn twos, reinforcements, that type of thing. <clears throat> Let's see. And we have more on turn five, turn six, turn seven. These are more units, reinforcements. Um, so that looks pretty cool. They're in full color according to the counter mix. <clears throat> Then we have the Japanese order of battle. Uh, let's see. Hainan. I'll start with a battle cruiser, a cruiser, another cruiser, some destroyers, and some transports. Uh, Bunch of ground units in and around China, and then we have a bunch of CVL, CLs, that type of thing, all set up. And it looks like we have various maybe supply centers. I don't know. There's a little supply sources anyway. And then we here we go on up to turn four to nine reinforcements. various CEL levels. Here we have the Allied Carrier Air Unit chart. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. No, <clears throat> I think we're at the maximum. Maximum, this is a bit zoom here. <clears throat> Allied off-map stacking. Then we have the Allied Carrier Air Unit charts, or examples, I guess, uh, illustrations. When they come in, nothing on the back. Looks like the Japanese Carrier Air Unit chart. Stacking, uh, off map stacking. <clears throat> Tell you what units are available at the beginning. And then reinforcements that come in during the game. Cool. And then we have a task force comp uh, composition chart. Task force creation. Looks like a little bit like a victory game specific war. You have screens, cores, airstrike groups, combat air patrol. Certain units uh, must occupy a given um, box for combat purposes, I'm guessing. That was who? <clears throat> I think these are the same, it looks like, for each player. And then we come to some more charts and tables. Looks like we have ground combat. Uh, let's see, we have attacker, target, CEL levels, ground combat results, all enemy units retreat, one enemy unit in combat is eliminated, and anybody else uh, retreats. Retreat one enemy unit, one enemy unit is eliminated, and X is all units are eliminated. Then it looks like we have torpedo dive bombing and level bombing uh, charts. And 
modifiers and such. What else we got? On the back, <coughs> looks like there might be, no, just one per player looks like. Naval surface combat, air to air, anti-aircraft, strafing and airfield bombardment. And over here we have the kamikaze combat tables. Now that I look at the date on this, it looks like it's 20 year, 10 years old now. And let's see, another chart or two. We have the Naval Surface Combat Resolution Groupings. Looks like there's kind of a flow chart type thing there. Who fights who? We have a more detailed sequence of play. That'll be nice. All of these are going to go into uh, 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 what are they called? Plastic uh, slip covers. I think that's all there is there. All right, let's look at some of these charts and tables here. Or charts and tables. Ah, it's been a long night. Some of these counters, I believe they're called. <clears throat> Let's see here a little bit. Well, let's see, get to the top here. Like I say, the information on them can be found in the uh, main rule book. Looks like we got all sorts of uh, different types of units. They all look very nice graphically. They're fairly clear to read. For these old tired eyes, they look pretty good. Looks like they're double sided. Of course that's upside down. Um, I guess you pick units that uh, have various... Well, now they tell you what CVs are. I don't see any C E L type readings on the back, so I guess these are just places where they set up and that type of stuff. I don't know. We'll find out when we read the book and the scenarios. Those look like they're allied. Does it say? Looks like they're just the allied forces, British and other formations. They just look like Japanese. Yes. Southern Headquarters, China, Kuangtung. Uh, yep, pretty much the same type of graphics, pretty much the same type of information. These will look all to be ground forces and air. Like I said, the printing looks nice and it looks easy to read. Like the counters are, like I said, 5 8 inch. This looks like aircraft for the Japanese and. American ground, maybe? Oh, these are like, well, some are heavy bombers. Um, B-25s, B-26s, transports, F-4Us. The Japanese player has the Sallies. Some of the others, what are they, Peggy? That type of thing, Tonys. Um, different types of fighters and bombers, as well as their CEL level. And then it looks like we have the Navy. Yes, counter sheet four or five front. Looks like they're offset just a little bit in the die cutting. Doesn't look like it'll be too major of a problem, except if you're going to trim the corners. Yeah, these are offset just a little, but like I said, I don't think they're going to ruin or make play that difficult. You just have to concentrate on uh, what you're doing. The back side has more of these, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure what you call them, aircraft carriers that they are based on, I guess. Yeah, places where they're based, Hawaii, Hawaiian Islands, that type of thing, Pearl Harbor, Manila, Espiritu Santo, however you pronounce that. 
All right, then we have one more, and this looks like a counter sheet, uh, marker sheet. This is six of six, I believe. No, five of five, front. Okay, well, those are numbers. And like words, sometimes you just got to put them in the right order to make them make sense. These are offset just a little bit, but not too bad in just a couple of places. Anyway, these look like more air units for neutral or not neutrals. Well, neutrals and stuff. Russians, Netherlands, that type of thing. Russians, the Buffaloes, F4. So, anyway, this is some of the counters, or all the counters. Now we'll take a look at the map. Well, the map is ginormous. Clearly larger than most of your other um, standard war games. It's all one piece. And, like I said, it's fairly huge. Um, we can do a quick map walk if you want. We're going to come over here. Let's see. Oh man, this thing is huge. I'll catch my camera cable on it. Let's see. The Hawaiian Islands are over here. This is the North Pacific. Well, you're just going to get a really bad, bad view here of my camera. Sorry. North Pacific Ocean. Down here we have the Marshall Islands. Uh, and then the Gilbert Islands. Then down here we have the Bismarck Archipelago, the Solomon Islands, the New Hebrides, New Caledonia. Up through here, let's see where are we at. This is the slot, Guadalcanal. Where are we at up here? Rabul. And where's truck at? Truck must be way up north of there. There's truck in the Caroline Islands. Then we have New Guinea. Port Moresby. And we head on down here to Australia. We have Townsville. Uh, Rockhampton. And down here at the bottom is Brisbane. Let me come on over. We have... Where's it at? Just missed it. Oh yeah, Darwin is up here. Okay, let's go over here. Find Java. We have Borneo, Celebes. Sarawak, I'm not sure I pronounced that. And then we have the British North Borneo. Over here we have the Philippines, Mindanao. Uh, let's see what else we got. Leyte Gulf, Manila, Luzon or Luzon. And then we'll move back uh, west again. We have Malaysia. We have Sumatra. And we have up here, where's Singapore? Singapore's down here. Moving up the... We have Thailand, French Indochina. Indian Burma. Now we move into China proper. Oh, sorry, I'm caught on my cable again. There we go. We have China. We have Hong Kong down there in the lower middle. Henan, or Hainan, sorry. And then let's see. Quit stepping on my cable here. It's the only way I can keep my camera going is keep the cable plugged in. We have North China. Outer Mongolia. Uh, let's see, we have Peking, kind of right there in the middle. 
Nanking, Shanghai. What am I missing here? Oh, there's Hong Kong. We have Hong Kong down there. Uh, let's see. We'll come on up here through the Yellow Sea and the Sea of Japan. Here's Japan proper. Old here. Uh, we have Okinawa and all the other main uh, towns and areas. Honshu. Hokkaido, Sendai, Tokyo. We can move over here. We have Korea, Manchukuo, or Manchuria. And then we have parts of the USSR. So that's a quick uh, map walk. And that's going to probably end my. Uh, um, quick look at this game. On the map we also have various control markers where and the different rules that apply to them. We also have full color terrain effects chart showing the movement effects and combat effects and the graphic representation of the chart. And we have over here, sorry for all the shadows, but my lighting is subpar. And we have the turn record track, which goes from December 41 to August of 45. And that's about it, strategic chip track and the tactical chip track. And that ends our brief look at Across the Pacific. Um, the game is still in print. You can still find it. I got mine for... Sheesh, what did I pay for this? 60 bucks maybe? I'm not sure. But um, can't wait to dig into it. Maybe show a few uh, examples of play, that kind of thing. Well, certainly not film an entire campaign of the game. But I may go through one of the solitaire scenarios or just show you how movement of ground, air, and naval works and how combat works. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, good gaming and we will talk to you later. Bye.